Do you need cybersecurity experience but not sure how to get it? One of the best ways to do it is with a home lab. In this week's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to build out the WebGoat platform in AWS for absolutely free. We're going to step through it step by step, and I'm going to show you how you can get that experience, understand the concepts in the technology stack, and be able to have that confidence added to your resume and go forward and get that cybersecurity job. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome to Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further faster. My name's Gerald Osier, and every Monday we're dropping videos around cybersecurity, the career industry. We interview experts, we share tools and labs, and just like this video on WebGo today. So if that's something that's interests you, check out the other videos or maybe hit subscribe. We post every Monday at noon. Now, real quick, if you want to just get to the WebGoat information, look at the show description below. There'll be hyperlinks with minute markers for each section of the show. Uh, I typically do a little bit of an intro for some uh, house business, um, which I'm going to do right now. But if you want to just jump to WebGoat, uh, just go right there. Real quick, I want to share for the Cypler, Simply Cyber community because I'm so excited to share this. Um, on the uh, SOC Analyst interview episode I did a few weeks ago, uh, one viewer, Antidrip, shared a comment saying that this video helped land them their first tier two cyber network engineer position, and more importantly, it changed their life. This is why I do Simply Cyber. Having this kind of impact, uh, it just, I'm so glad that, that Antidrip shared this comment with me, and I hope there's others out there um, that are, are having you know positive changes in their life because of uh, of the channel and because of cybersecurity in general. Cybersecurity has given me so much and I'm, I'm so, so uh, grateful to be able to contribute back. Okay, so this video is a continuation of my video series on a list that uh, Stefan uh, Waldvogel had posted on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll show the uh, image there. But he, Stefan listed a whole bunch of um, you know, resources to take advantage of. And we've moved on to the WebGoat one. So WebGoat is another um, op um, web application security platform that you can build out. Very similar to the Juice Shop one that we did last week's episode. So if you're interested in Juice Shop, check out that video. But what I really want to point out here is I've been playing with WebGoat. And as much as I loved Juice Shop, I'm beginning to think that Juice Shop's better suited for Capture the Flag. Yes, there's some guidance around uh, tutorials and what different things are in Juice Shop. But WebGoat, WebGoat is next level as far as actually being a legit teaching aid lab. Like, I really feel like you could do an entire course, like an undergraduate level course, using WebGoat as the platform for the labs that you step through. And what you'll see that in a minute. But what I want you to take from this is if you are trying to learn, you know, kind of web application security uh, concepts and um, attacking, maybe you're thinking about doing bug bounty, WebGoat, this video, this is going to be gold because this platform is sick. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to build it in AWS. So let's do that first. And uh, I had to cobble together some different things. So I'll put this in the show notes below the actual like code that you're going to have to drop. Uh, but it like I had to, it took me some tinkering and figuring out. So you know, log into your AWS console as we always do on this uh, channel. And uh, go ahead and go to EC2. You're going to want a launch instance. Go ahead and choose the uh, Linux, AM, Amazon Linux 2 AMI. This is very similar to what we did with Juice Shop, right? <clears throat> Make sure the free tier is selected. Okay. Now, configuration instance details. Go on down to the bottom where it says user data, right? And I want you to post uh, this in. All right. So it'll be in the show notes below. But basically what we're going to do is it's a little shell file. We're going to update, um, um, I guess, yum. I guess we're going to install Docker. That's the important part. Uh, we're going to start Docker. 
WebGoat has been containerized, which makes it super awesome, just like Juice Shop. We're going to pull WebGoat down as a Docker container. We're going to run it listening on port 8080. That's important to remember. And then, um, we'll, you know, launch WebGoat. Now, I, I want to point out just for this video, WebWolf is another module that the WebGoat people have put together that allows you to see, um, you know, more clearly from the attacker perspective. Uh, I'm going to put this here. Um, I haven't actually verified this. I got it going yesterday, but I was unable to get WebWolf. So we'll take a look at it. But the important part is that you got WebGoat. So you got all this running. You got port 8080, port 9090. Let's go ahead and click add storage. We're not going to add any. Click add tags. We're not going to add any. Click secure uh, security group. Now I want you to add a rule. And remember, we just did... Um, we Well, hold on. It's got to be custom rule. Uh, we just did port 8080. And we did port 9090. Now, for the sake of this video, I want to call your attention to this. I am doing basically wildcard. Any IP address can connect to this. WebGoat is very, very insecure, right? It's like by design, it's that way. I would strongly encourage you be careful if you open this up. If you're going to shut WebGoat down as soon as you're done messing with it, that's fine. Um, if you want a little bit of added security, you can choose the My IP. Uh, I'm not going to do that for the sake of the demonstration, but My IP will restrict it down just to the IP of um, ideally, like if you're at home, your internet facing IP, like whatever your ISP's IP address is. You don't need to know any of that. Just just know that if you do anywhere or cut, you know, this zero. Um, you do introduce a little bit of risk. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch. We got our rules. Again, you'll have to uh, either create a key pair or use an existing one. If you've been following the show um, for a while, you probably have a key pair already instantiated. All right, so our our um, our instance is launching, and now we're going to be checking this out. Okay, so here is um, WebGoat's project, right? It's at OWASP. They're hosting it. Um, it's similar to Juice Shop. Shop has more documentation and stuff that I saw. A lot of the uh, documentation in WebGoat is inside the application. Uh, you can see the description here. It's basically a tool designed to help educate you on web application security, right? They have their goals here, um, you know, Explain the vulnerability, learn by doing, and explain the mitigation. This is what I'm talking about. This is what makes this platform so awesome. Like literally they give you the kind of textbook education piece. Then you have a, a complimentary lab associated with it. And then understanding how to defend. Like this platform is awesome whether you're into the red side or the blue side, or you're just trying to get cybersecurity uh, like comprehension concepts and stuff like that. Like such a such a great platform. Okay, so um, they have the lessons here. Like this, it says th there's not much content here, right? But once we get into the platform, you'll see and it'll be tight. Uh, again, here's the WebWolf one. I haven't got it successfully going. Maybe we'll get it here in, the, um, in, in this video today. And then they have the start here. This, they, they increment it one, two, three, but that's not really how it works. You can see we've done the Docker um, instance. Um, and this will look familiar from that code. So let's check how our EC2 instance is doing here. I'm going to just name this because uh, I have a couple of things. WebGoat, you don't have to do this. But I like to see initial on the status. It has to be um, two of two checks. So this isn't ready yet. So what you're going to need to do... Um, What you're going to need to do also is you're going to need to uh, download OWASP Zap. You can use um, Burp Suite also. So OWASP Zap or Burp Suite. You'll need that as part of the uh, lab here. Okay, so Burp Suite or OWASP Zap. But for us in our demo today, we'll be using OWASP Zap. Okay, just go ahead and download it from here. This is basically like a web application proxy. Uh, which which you don't need to fully understand right now, but just realize that when you send something from your computer uh, to like you you know you go to Google.com and you type in a search query, it goes from your computer you know basically down the network stack out 
to Google servers comes back. A web application proxy basically kind of sits right beneath your application layer and the network traffic stops at the proxy and you can manipulate it or see what it is. And it, it's a really cool tool and it's absolutely um, vital if you're going to be doing web application security. So go ahead and make sure you download that. I'm going to go ahead and actually launch it right now as well. So let's check our instance. Oh, two of two checks. So we're good now. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is we're going to get our public IP address. We're going to copy it. Now in OWASAP, just for the sake of how this lab is going to work, make sure you, you know, you start it. I want to tell you, I tried to use Chrome. See, if you hit manual explore, you'll be presented with this window here. You see how they have Chrome and Firefox. I have both installed on my computer. I'm a Chrome user. I don't know if it's something wrong with OWASAP right now, but I was unable to get the Chrome one to work. So um, for this demonstration, use Firefox. I've got it to work with Firefox. So I copied and pasted the URL from, from here, right? So we got our URL copied from right here. We're going to go into OWASAP. We're going to put it right there. And by the way, do colon 8080 because normal web traffic by default goes on 80, but we have told WebGoat to bind to port 8080. Again, you don't need to understand that. Just do 8080 because that's the port it's going to listen on and do launch browser. This will kick off um, a Firefox instance. Here we go. And it'll go to that URL. And it should, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. You have to do that and then webgoat uh, slash login. I'm sorry. I should have done that. Here we go. So here is our webgoat instance. Now you'll be presented initially with uh, username and password. This isn't part of the challenge. You do have to register a user. So I'm going to um, name my user simply cyber and my password is going to be uh, foobar1. Foobar1. And I agree to the terms. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So we're presented in. You can see the on the on the left nav here. They've got all the different lessons uh, here. The, the, this um, these these overlays are from Z, uh, OWASAP. So like it it it's a little annoying if you're trying to read it, but just know that it, you know. <laughs> so. I recommend starting right at the top. It looks like WebWolf. Um, maybe it's not running. They do have some information here. Let's let's actually see if we can get WebWolf working. So remember, we 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 did it on port ninety ninety, and then you know I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so if someone knows how to get WebWolf working, um, let me know. It's obviously not working for me, but the point today was WebGoat. Okay, so. I mean, really just start right at the beginning. If you're new, like Juice Shop is really designed for people who have a little bit more sav savvy on web application security and actually kind of test in their skills and there's some help to help you through it. WebGoat is, is even more like entry level where it's like web app 101, right? Like HTTP, whoops, excuse me, HTTP basics, right? Here we go. Here's how HTTP works, right? It's the you know, the client server uh, re request response type stuff, right? Here they say, you, you know, go ahead and get OWASP Z attack proxy zap, which we've already done. Um, and it, it basically explains some stuff, see? So enter your name. This is very first stuff. And type go. All right, so let's put in Gerald and hit go. Okay, so all it did was spin uh, my name around. It reversed it, which is what it's supposed to do, right? Okay. So let's look at what it looks like in Zap. So Zap, I clicked on the history tab. Remember I said that Zap is now what is like a man in the middle effectively. It's in between my web browser and the server or you know my, on my network stack so we can actually look at what's going on here. So let's see. How do we See? Here's the, you know, post. This was the, this was the, when I hit uh, Gerald into the text field and hit go, 
this is the packet, essentially, that was built and sent to the web server, which is WebGoat, um, from my computer to WebGoat. And you can see that the field, Gerald, the field is called person. The value I typed was Gerald. Um, you can see the where the web URL that it posted to or the URI it posted to and some other kind of interesting data. So you're beginning to understand, like looking beneath the, le the, the hood of like basically HTTP traffic. So now let's get a little more creative. It says, what type of command did WebGoat use for the lesson? A poster again. Well, I've already ruined it for you. It's post. And then it says, what's the magic number? Well, I don't see, I don't see any magic number. Do you? I don't see a magic number. So let's, I don't know, just five, I guess. I don't know. You're close. Try again. The, the magic number is incorrect, as expected, because we guessed. Um, see? Okay, so the post comment um, added a hidden field with the magic number in it, right? So the magic number is 36. Congratulations. See? There you go. So now, like, okay, so we get a little bit of gratification because we, we completed a, a, a test, right? It was like a challenge. But you also just messed around with Zap. You also kind of got a little feel for HTTP traffic. I mean, it's the basics, right? So that's what we're doing here. They go in. Um, you can see it, it's pretty obvious. You go left to right. You count through the numbers. It gives you some challenges. Uh, developer tools. They talk about, you know, inside the browser hitting... If you hit F12 on your browser, you get that, um, oops, excuse me. You get a developer console on Firefox. It's on the bottom on Chrome. It's usually on the side, but you can see all these different, um, you know, like the data, the source, you can do a console so you can interact with JavaScript, etc. cetera. Um, again, really, really uh, entry level stuff here. But if you don't have the experience of the background, um, this is what you, this is how you start. This is it, right? Like CIA triad, that's like foundational for any information security. It explains to you, gives you examples for all, you know, the three CIAs, right? Gives you a little quiz, like you should be able to get, get this right, right? Uh, crypto basics, the difference between encoding and hashing and encrypting, like, Hopefully at this point, you, you understand that WebGoat is basically a web application security 101 kind of cybersecurity foundational 101 type class all bundled into a nice, clean package. And it's, I mean, we stood this up in what, like three minutes, people? Like you can get this going in no time flat and really, really get into it. I mean, you can do cross-site scripting, which is like one of the most um, common, like most popular kind of um, web application security vulnerability, um, broke broken access control. So like you should, you should be able to like explain, you know, what direct object references are or indirect object references, right? Like, um, like it's just, Oh, it's such a great platform. So anyways, I don't know if, if anyone out there has used WebGoat or has experience um, with it and, and has thoughts on it, please share below. Um, as I mentioned, when you're done uh, with WebGoat, you definitely want to um, either, if, if you have not set it to my IP address, then you may want to go into instance state and stop the instance. If you have set it to my IP little less risk there. Again, you're on the free tier. So I think you get like 750 hours um, a month. And realistically, like you're not gonna, I think you can go through the entire WebGo platform in 750 hours easily, right? So um, I, I forget exactly where it is, but at some point um, you do, like there's configuration um, where you have to like tell what time zone it is because you're dealing with like log files and you don't want uh, the log files in your time to um, not line up as you're doing kind of um, uh, like analysis on what happened. So it actually, um, 
you have to put in a time zone, right? And I just wanted to share this. I'll put this in the show notes, but the actual like formatting for the time zones is, it's available here on Wikipedia, but under this TZ database name. So like for me on the East Coast, um, Air America, New York is what I used, but I just wanted to make you aware that since that's a slight configuration thing that you'll need to do. So yeah, really a special thanks to Stefan. It, like I can't, I can't thank you enough for putting that list together because it's really fun um, making these videos to align to that list. Now it's time for our one cool thing. This week's one cool thing is a departure from cybersecurity. It is RetroPie, which is a custom distribution designed to be installed as an operating system on a Raspberry Pi platform. And Raspberry Pis are um, these little uh, if you're not familiar with them, they're like these little cheap, um, complete computer platforms that people do all sorts of interesting projects with. It's got internet, wireless, USB, HDMI, audio on. It's like, it's a really powerful platform for what it is. And uh, you can get it for just like 35 bucks. So like, it's fairly affordable to just kind of have like little projects um, running around. But RetroPie is one that I love. I'm a huge uh, classic arcade uh, fan. And I, I, you know, built up a RetroPie uh, recently just goofing around and uh, played some games on it. You can plug controllers in and stuff like that or keyboard if you want to go that route. Um, and it was just fun. So if you're, um, you know, kind of from my generation and you get nostalgic about 8-bit games, even though 8-bit games are like hot right now, uh, which I find funny, um, you can you can use RetroPie to kind of tap into some of that nostalgia or maybe... Uh, play some classic games with your kids and kind of bring them back to where where you were when you were their age. So give it a shot, okay? That'll do it for this week's episode. I really, really appreciate it. If you know, please uh, comment below. Um, I love engaging with you guys and understanding what's going on out there. Um, if you if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps uh, promote the video and let other people find it. And if you like the content, hit subscribe because I am. I have no plans to stop making this content, all right? So until next time, stay secure.